Okay, folks, welcome to Sunday Night Futures Live. This is Bob Desmond, and thank you for being here. I hope everybody had a awesome weekend, and I just got done cooking uh, some really good chicken cutlets. Really, really good. Burn my finger, though. And I, I roasted, um, I don't know if Talon's out there yet, but I roasted uh, Brussels sprouts for the first time. Came out very, very good. I'm very impressed with myself. Um, so what we're going to talk about tonight is uh, the pre-market action and the futures market is open. I'm looking at them right now as I peer through the side of my eyes. We'll share my screen in a moment. We're going to talk about the stocks that we like for the new trading week. I didn't get a chance to put out best stock charts for the new trading week, so we'll do it live tonight, and we'll talk about the trades that I like, mostly from the long side, but we're going to talk a little bit about the taboo, the big taboo, and that is, God forbid, you short NVIDIA. Uh, are we ready yet? Stick around. We'll talk about if, when, and how we plan on shorting NVIDIA. So let's get to it. Uh, we'll talk about also how your government, our government, has put us $1.2 trillion in more debt over the weekend. So let's get to it. Let's say hello to folks. Michael, welcome. Like, subscribe. You know the deal, please. Uh, Mr. Pete, welcome. Franklin, the gentleman, Franklin. RK. <laughs> I did. I have my Brussels sprouts today. Yes, I did. Larry, short NVIDIA buy gold. That is it in a nutshell. I'm with you. Not quite yet on the NVIDIA trade. A little bit longer. Uh, I posted a few stocks. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you. I always appreciate a good reminder. And I will take a look at that right now as we speak. I have to sign in like everybody else. Uh, ah. And Franklin, let me make sure I have you up here. Yes, sir. You are good to go. GM, DBA. I took a look and Jeff I have up here too. Oh, we did video already. Uh, we... DBA, man, that thing is just in fuego. I don't understand that. I, I still have yet to go into the components. Maybe we'll do that tonight of the DBA. And we'll take a look at the whys behind that rally. It doesn't make sense because wheat, corn, uh, what's the other one? I forget the other one. We'll go over them in a moment. Uh, they just really haven't been doing all that much, especially wheat. Yeah, DBA is an agriculture ETF, ripping. It's going up higher. Um, RB, hey, brother. Happy Sunday to you, too. Yeah, I, I like to cook. I like to cook. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a workaholic, and if if I don't cook, I, I, I don't unwind. So I like to cook. And plus, I cook my food for the, the, the week ahead. Good evening, Jody. Welcome. Yeah, I know they're going to do a split. I think it's a big split, too. Is it like 50 to 1, something like that? Could somebody uh, let me know what that is, what kind of a split that is? Michael, hello, sir. Uh, is, is, when did he say that? I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised. I've been in DBA for a while and looking for an exit. Okay. Okay, we'll talk about that. Uh, good evening, Bob. Appreciate your Sunday sessions. Well, thank you, Joel. Appreciate that. Why is DBA ripping food-related equities? I, 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 we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna answer that question tonight, Joel. I think it's a great topic, and I'm curious myself. So let's let's resolve it. Uh, 50, 50 to one, yeah, I, I, crazy. Uh, the I love I love Chipotle the stock. I, I the, the 
the options, even though even though it's over a thousand dollars per share, options is so illiquid. It drives me crazy. The markets are not good there at all. Hi, Bob. The Uniparty hates USA. Very true. I, I very true. Very sad what uh, has happened here. Again, they're splitting this weekend, RB. Good evening, Mark. Okay, let's get to it. We have a lot of people on tonight. Like, subscribe, please. You know the deal. And let's get to it. Let me share my screen before I forget. And you folks remind me, hey, Bob, by uh, you're, you're uh, not sharing your screen. Ten minutes in. Uh, where's my screen share? There it is. Okay, let's get to it. Let me take a slug of water. Now, Friday's close, these are five-minute charts. Friday's close was a cluster F for the uh, E-minis, and not just the E-minis. So th we left the day, quote-unquote, oversold a bit. So we're, we're off the lows of the session. We're off the lows. We're technically... Uh, higher than where we closed on Friday afternoon. But that we're showing is down at current. We're actually higher. Let's take a look at the NQ. This is the NASDAQ 100 futures version of the trip Qs. Yeah, and they're, they're looking strong. Let's set up an alert here. I want to know if we move above uh, this resistance level. And for that matter, let's set up an alert letting us know because I have a short position on here. Okay. So we'll get notified if, uh, if, uh, we begin to break down. Let's take a look at the RUT, Russell 2000. Now, yields um, did pull back, but the Russell 2000 still couldn't catch a bid on Friday. Let's check out yields now out of curiosity. Yields are down. Wait a minute. What's going on here? They're technically up. They're showing down. I hate that. This is a measurable reversal bar. I mean, if we close here, let's set up an alert. If we move out of this base, you're going to have a small caps, uh, large cap beta, small cap beta, going to have a problem uh, if you get the 10 year yield moving up higher again. And I want, we're going to talk about the yield curve in a little bit. I did not talk about that over the weekend with members. I forgot all about it. And back to a five-minute chart. Let's create an alert. I want to know if we break down to new lower lows because 10-year yield matters, folks. I know a lot of people out there new to trading. You want you want me to just talk about the hot stocks? And you know we talk about bonds. We talk about commodities because it's all tied in. One has everything to do with the other. If you have commodities that are hot, well, that's inflation. And you need to be looking to see whether or not yields are moving up higher, anticipating a Federal Reserve that may have to get a little bit tighter with policy. And that would be bearish for equities. So everything... Everything has its place. It's a puzzle. The markets are a puzzle, and it's our job to – I've been loving the mid-caps lately, and 
Uh, they are now beginning to break down. Let's go to a 15-minute uh, view. Well, 30-minute view is better. Yeah, we're breaking down here on the mid-caps. So we went bullish on the mid-caps a few weeks ago. Not quite back here. More back here. And uh, they went up higher. So I think we nailed that right. MDY was the position that I was eyeballing. This is a mid-cap ETF. And that has had a heck of a run. So it appears that it's going into a little bit of a rest. It's not out. In fact, the weekly chart still looks very, very good. But it looks as though the mid-caps want to take a bit of a pause here. That being said, you can't rule them out from moving higher. That includes the large cap uh, down names. You know, that's something that, you know, we really need to spend a little bit of time talking about over and over again is that we are seeing a good amount of sector rotation in this market. So, you know, you don't need to just simply be in tech stocks. And I have a list of names that are setting up and they're pretty broad based healthcare, uh, some technology, not a lot of it, uh, energy, uh, industrials, uh, food player. So there's some really good names out there that are setting up very, very nicely at or near new all-time record highs. And that's what we want to do. We want to find Bollinger Band squeezes on stocks, which are consolidating tightly and are at all-time record highs. Because if they break out to new all-time record highs, what don't we have to worry about? We don't have to worry about overhead supply. We don't have to worry about prior buyers looking to get made whole and getting out. We don't want to contend with that if we don't have to. That's the beauty of a market that's at all-time highs. So let's take advantage of it. Let's go back to a five-minute chart. I don't, I don't think I did the Dow. Let's take a look at the Dow. Woo, Dow getting hit here. And they continue to sell this market off after hours on Friday. I was not watching it. I had a date with a fine 18-year-old scotch, and uh, it had my full attention. So, uh, yeah, Dow, uh, Dow under a little bit of pressure here. A little bit of topping action on the weekly chart last week. You know, when I see this, you know, I always ask myself the question. I say, self, uh, could we be seeing, beginning to see the beginnings of a head and shoulder setup? Could this be the left shoulder? Or could this be the left shoulder? Is this the head forming? We don't know. It's all pure speculation right now. For all I know, we're going to do another breakout this week. But something to think about. I wouldn't bet on it, but just something to watch out for. Now, moving on to the dollar, which, frankly, ruined our week for our commodity trades last week. This is the dollar on a weekly time frame, folks, and it broke out. Here's your upper band of resistance, weekly time frame. We broke out. So while I love gold, here's a daily chart, breakout. I love silver. I love them all. I love commodities right now. Uh, certain commodities are more sensitive inversely to the U.S. dollar than others. And it just so happens to be that gold, silver, gold mining stocks, silver mining stocks are heavily, heavily sensitive inversely to the U.S. dollar. So and you can see from the performance last week on the gold stocks, that they did not appreciate the rally in the dollar. Gold on Friday. Let's bring up G.C. Uh, it is up, even though the dollar is up at current, we're up nearly a half percentage point. 
so that's good. Five minutes sharp. Let's check out silver. Silver about flat. Nice little Bollinger Band squeeze setting up here. I think we have it on a 15-minute time frame. Yeah, we do. Bollinger Band squeeze. You have your Bollinger Bands in orange trading within the Keltner channels in a mauve tan or an eggshell color line. And it looks as though we are going to get resolved here to the upside. That's my bet. And yes, I am biased because we own silver. Okay. Let's take a look at um, ag prices for a moment. Uh, let's go to the weekly chart. Corn in the pre-market on the 15-minute chart is looking pretty good. Let's go to the weekly chart. Uh, corn was up last week. No breakout, though. Soybeans. Bearish reversal. Wheat. Oh, look at wheat. I'm a buyer of wheat here. I, I'm calling a bottom on wheat, at least a short-term bottom. I think wheat is going to rally here uh, very, very soon. So looking uh, very, very uh, bullish for the new trading week and probably the next couple of months. I like wheat here. Let's check in with live cattle, my live, my New York strip which continues to accelerate in price. And we're stalling out here. Perhaps a rounding top on live cattle, God, God willing. Let's take a look at energy prices. Now, energy is a problem. Because it's going up. And that is, of course, inflationary. Oh, come on. Sorry, guys. Light, sweet, crude. Uh, up fractionally. Essentially flat. They tried to take it down. In fact, they did take it down. We're technically... Uh, down relative to the close. Actually, no, no, we're up relative to the close on Friday. I'm looking at the pre uh, after hours trade. Let's take a look at Natty Gas. Oh, you know, before we go to Nat Gas, I want to check in with the R Bob gasoline contracts. Uh, gasoline prices are up roughly 30% on the year in a single quarter. Yet everybody's looking for the Federal Reserve to cut rates. Uh, okay. Yeah, that, that'll happen. R. Bob, where are you at? Here we go. Here's the weekly chart of gasoline. And you can see that is just been in fuego. We're at the lower band of the what appears to be an ascending wedge formation. And I think that this gets resolved up. Copper. Copper looking good here. Continues its rally. Palladium. Weekly chart. Basing nicely. Platinum. Again, another precious metal, which is basing nicely. I'm bullish on all of these. All of these are looking good. Let's shut back in with the dollar for a moment. What's it doing? It's down fractionally. Euro, which got annihilated last week. 
which I can't, I don't understand. Uh, ups fractionally, is, and I'm sorry, that was the euro. This is the yen up uh, fractionally. Okay, let's go to some comments. Uh, can Trump use D DJT for? <laughs> Uh, no, because he, I think you need to put a dollar sign in front of DJT, at least on stockcharts.com. So you probably could. Uh, NVIDIA weekly chart room up to previous high of 974. Currently, the week's candlestick is in the supply zone. We're going to go over that chart, Mike. I don't disagree with you. I think we're on the same page. <laughs> hey, Jeff, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, that would be my vehicle of choice, Michael, W-E-A-T for wheat. I have a futures account. I, I've never traded a future in my life. Uh, maybe I will. Maybe I'll toy around with it. Uh, oh, oh, that makes sense. Joe, okay, so DBA is 8.5% cocoa, and cocoa has been on a tear. Gotcha. That makes complete sense. But 8.5% carrying that entire ETF. Wow. I don't think that they have cocoa prices on here. But if, if, you, if you're wondering what that chart of cocoa looks like, basically just look at a straight line going up. It's just a crazy chart. Thanks, Joel. T.Z. Burton, painting the house today. I got work coming up this week. I got, they're tearing out all my front walkways, driveway, everything, all new. Yes, every once in a while you got one, Jody. Uh, Denny, hey, Denny. Uh, do you ever use 65-minute charts? Uh, rarely. I get the why behind him because it's an equivalent number of uh, charts aligned with the number of hours in the day. So uh, not usually. I need to get more in the habit of using them. Finding lots of DTL cheats on that time frame with in-the-box bases. DTL. I, I got I to gotta say, I don't know what that is. Maybe if I think about it, it'll come to me, but I'm on the spot right now. What's DTL? Hey, Sean. All right, let's get to it. I don't have a lot of topics to go over this evening. Uh, let's just talk about the economic calendar. I have more charts to go over than anything else. Ah, okay. All right, now I feel like, a, feel like an idiot. Okay. Uh, so let me go back to your original comment now. Finding lots of downtrend line cheats. What do you mean by cheats? Head fake breakouts? Easter is coming. Coco is, yeah, it's going to be an expensive Easter. I'm sure the chemical companies will come up some uh, fake soybean chocolate. All right, so economic data coming out this week. Somebody mentioned Bostic earlier. And Goolsby is a political hack. He doesn't really say all that much. But uh, Bostic coming out tomorrow. Uh, durable goods, very, very important economic number coming out on Tuesday. Consumer confidence coming out at 10 a.m., folks. Don't forget about that 10 a.m. report. Everybody you get conditioned for those 8.30 reports, and then people start trading, and all of a sudden they forget about that 10 a.m. report. And consumer confidence can move the market. Wednesday, no economic data. Thursday, initial jobless claims. We get that every week. Uh, GDP, second revision. Expect a revision down. That's the trend. They always revise down. They come out with a big headline number, big beat, excite the market. Then all of a sudden, they revise downward. Uh, consumer sentiment final. Friday. Retail inventories. Oh, we get the PCE index coming out 
on Friday. That's Jay Powell's favorite inflation benchmark. And he's also going to be coming out on Friday. This is the second Friday in a row he's giving a speech. Uh, I don't know which one I would buy. I don't have any on my list right now, and I have I have no passion for any of them, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I would I would defer to the uh, Investors Business Daily and find the best leader of the group and see whether or not there's a setup there. Denny loving his Cadbury's. Uh, buying lower in base before it reaches pivot. Closer moving average to define risk. Buying lower in base. So what are you saying? That they're knocking the shares down to the lower end of the base and then rallying it up through the pivot? So they're, they're blowing out stops and then rallying it? All right, uh, PE multiple. We have a 35 handle on the S&P 500. Very expensive market, both on a forward-looking basis and on a trailing basis, which is what you're looking at now. CME Fed Watch tool. June rate cut probability. Not un- not much change here. From Friday, 74% probability of an ease. I don't believe it's going to happen. Uh, July, looks like this ticked up a little bit to 87 spot two. Again, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm not getting that vibe. I don't know why Powell would do it. I could see him ending his balance sheet reduction or at least slowing down the pace but um, cutting rates, not unless his back is up against the wall. Our earnings coming out this week, not a lot going on here. Our, this is, we're in a hiatus for the most part. You know, GameStop, you know, nothing really going on here. Rumble comes out this week. That's going to be an interesting one. Carnival. Other than that, I mean... Not much going on in terms of earnings. All right, so over the weekend, folks, and this could be the reason why you're seeing gold up, dollar down at current. Swamp wins, Senate approves $1.2 trillion in spending bill, narrowly averting government shutdown. God forbid they shut down the government. Uh, So, of course, they did it in the wee hours of Saturday morning when nobody's watching. And they just don't want people talking about this. The page was 1,012 pages in the bill. And it makes you wonder, did anyone read it? And you know they didn't. So here's what they spent it on. Just basically giveaways. Um, I, 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 I have no words for what they're doing here. Uh, They are destroying this country. They are bankrupting us, and they're doing it intentionally. Nobody could be this stupid. Nobody could be this stupid. It's nefarious, and uh, this is the time that we live with. Uh, Chip Roy, Texas, the swamp wins again. We have a a 1,000-page bill, $1.2 trillion, a bill filled with all manners of spending priorities that are at odds with the American people, and it's a sad, disappointing day. Republicans promised to spend less and secure the border. This bill does neither. And then you get this. This guy here, who I never trusted, Mike Johnson. He was supposed to be the game changer. Uh, some Democrats say they would s- save Speaker Johnson from an ouster. Uh, I've, they've already, I think Marjorie Taylor Greene, Already filed papers. As a matter of fact, yeah, she did. Uh, She filed the papers to uh, impeach him from his chair, vacate his seat, and we'll see if that happens. 
but uh, something's got to happen here quickly. But you know it's a sad day when the Democrats are going to come defend the so-called conservative. And uh, it's the uniparty. We're under attack, and that's just the way it is. There is no Democrat-Republican. So coming out of the Red Sea, uh, the Chinese thought that they had to deal with the Houthi rebels. They, apparently, they do not. Uh, the Houthis, they uh, shot a missile at one of their tankers, and it was hit. So the price of shipping continues to rise, and um, this is this has not been resolved yet. Think about it. This has been going on for months. We have the largest Navy in the world in terms of firepower, and we have yet to resolve this. Uh, so I thought this chart was interesting. I'm going to blow this up. In light blue, total net wealth held by bottom 50%. In red, up here, net wealth held by 0.1%. 99.9% tile. They have all the wealth. And M2 money supply, what that is, is that's all the money that's been printed. And it has been taken away from those who do not have and given to those who have way more than their fair share. And at some point in time, this is going to get resolved, and unfortunately, it's probably going to be a, a bloodbath of a catastrophe in this country when it does get resolved, because these people are protected. They're protected by security, fences, and whatnot. They could take a jet out of the country, and we're going to be stuck here with all manner of hooligans. Yield curve, going into the new trading week. We closed up four bips last week. So what I'm looking for here on the yield curve is a potential breakout on the yield curve, a steepening. And if we break out, folks, you can bet your bottom dollar that the stock market is going to come under pressure. Hertz meltdown reveals scale of EV debacle. So the there's an EV bubble and it is bursting and it's bursting very very quickly. The CEO uh, Hertz Stephen sure has been booted out due to vast purchase of ED EV fleet that the consumers didn't even want to rent the company ha was has now forced been forced to sell them at a deep discount and in a market where consumers are not particularly interested so he's gone out of that position and the likely the likely victim here is going to be Tesla Tesla's in a lot of trouble this EV bubble is really just gaining steam now. And you can see that uh, this dead cap bounce, this bear flag setup got resolved to the downside on Friday. Let's take a look at a weekly chart. Something just fired off. NQ is at or below. So NQ... Just move, move to new lower lows on the session. And I'm looking to see if there's anything behind this in terms of volume. Could be. Let's check in with yields really quick. I suspect that yields may be uh, bumping up higher here. No. No. 
Let's check in with volatility. Volatility is down. The one thing I do want to point out is that when I was prepping for the show, when you take a look at a weekly chart of the VIX, now the VIX is supposed to trade inversely of the S&P 500. And um, the one thing that's strange here is... Let me just clean this up really quick. Okay. The one thing that's strange here is that ever since the bottom back with an 11 handle back in December, we've actually been grinding up higher on a weekly chart, meaning higher lows, no higher highs really per se, but we have... higher lows. Now, why does that matter? It matters because of a couple of reasons. One, is that is that um, it's not confirming the upward move in the S&P 500. So when I look at this, you know, the VIX is supposed to be like an insurance policy. People go in, they buy uh, VIX contracts to hedge their positions against the S&P 500. So the way I interpret this is that if you don't have VIX, which is confirming, here's the E-minis. Here's the S&P 500. Same weekly chart. Here's the VIX putting in higher lows, but no breakout yet. Here's the S&P 500, higher lows, higher highs. So my interpretation of this is that somebody's buying insurance on this market, thus preventing the VIX from breaking down to new lower lows. The other thing I want to point out on this chart is that you have a very, very potentially bullish setup here. And what do I mean by that? Well, taking a look at your Bollinger Bands in orange, they're trading inside the Keltner channels on a weekly time frame. That, this is a lot of pressure that's building up, consolidation that's building up on the VIX. And it's going to get released one way or the other. We're not 100% sure which direction, but given the fact that the S&P 500 is overvalued, extended, uh, those two reasons, it makes sense that due to the fact that the VIX is not breaking down to new lower lows, and in fact, has been putting in new higher lows, despite the fact that the S&P 500 has been moving up higher, that this is going to get resolved to the upside. And it may not happen this week, may not happen this month. But uh, it's something to, put, to take note of. Put a post-it note on your screen if you're thinking about putting on a big, long position. Uh, just keep in mind that you have the VIX. It's like a coiled spring, and it's ready to unleash. So be careful. Last time we saw this was back here, and it was nowhere near as consolidated as it is right now. And you can see what happened back then. That's a pretty big move. April is a strong month for the markets. Yes, it is. Um, I try to support companies that are listed in Public Square. Uh, yeah, I, I've heard about Public Square. Uh, I, I need to get into the habit of going over there. Uh, and for, for those folks not familiar, what TZ is talking about is that there's a network of companies that do business through and tz correct me along my uh my journey of trying to explain what public square is it's basically a an interface where you you 
you could do business with companies. Let's say you want to buy chicken and it's good quality chicken, but you don't want to give it to Tyson Foods because Tyson just laid off a thousand Americans in a in a in a town of five thousand people, thus destroying the town to come over into New York to hire illegal migrants. So I don't want to do business with Tyson Foods. So where can I get uh, good chicken, quality chicken, with a company that uh, is committed to not doing stuff like that? Well, you go to Public Square. It's not just chicken, obviously. Okay. So we beat that into the mud. All right, back to Tesla on a weekly chart. No new weekly low last week, and we are getting oversold on stochastics but i just can't get excited about this stock not with it continuing to put in lower highs and lower lows if anything right now i'd be selling premium on tesla strangles whatnot and pretty wide ones as well 15 20 deltas on them now to nvidia now i mentioned that we're looking to short nvidia not this week. Uh, I do have a price target. We'll go to that price target in a moment, at which time we will look to get short of NVIDIA. But right here, right now, I think that the path of least resistance remains higher for NVIDIA. What's the game plan? I think that we'll probably put on a uh, vertical spread, meaning a put spread on NVIDIA, and that's basically selling puts, and that's a bullish bet. Now, the one thing that I need to keep an eye on is the fact that we do have RSI at 91 on an S&P 500 stock. Uh, this is not going to stay at these levels for much longer. So the question is, when do I want to short this beast? So let's go to the monthly chart, because what I was able to do was to extrapolate out on a monthly time frame where we should have resistance. I'm eyeballing 1080, 1080 per share. And we'll be looking to put on a short position on the video, probably initially with uh, call spreads, selling call spreads, which is a bearish bet. And then as we begin to see weakness on NVIDIA, then we'll look to buy put spreads, which is a bearish bet. So that's the game plan here. We're not going to be short in the common stock, uh, but we do I do plan on being short of NVIDIA in a, probably a very, very short period of time. I think that we're going to head up to that 1080 mark, to 1080 to 1100 mark, probably in the blink of an eye. We're probably going to get up there pretty quick. So it'll be a parabolic move up higher. It will be unsustainable. We'll look to take advantage of that. Uh, perhaps later on in the week or the following week, but it's going to happen pretty soon. But the path of least resistance right now is to the upside. I would not be short of NVIDIA quite yet. Soon, though. Other names that we like going into the new trading week, Amazon. What they've been doing is rotating money into Microsoft one day, Netflix the next day, Google one day, uh, so on and so forth. That's all they've been doing. And so the question is, who are they going to pump tomorrow? I think it's going to be Amazon. Amazon broke out yet again above the 176 mark last week. Let's check out the daily view. Yeah, they're going to they're going to send this up higher. So I'm a buyer here of Amazon stock. I think it's a very very good looking chart. Is it extended on a weekly time frame? Sure. But uh, I think they're going to rotate money into it to keep this party going. They got to keep the party going. So what do they do? Rotate money into individual stocks. Why do they need to do that? Because you do not have Tesla anymore. You do not have Apple anymore. Look at Apple on Thursday. Absolutely destroyed on antitrust. Google, they got a bump. But they have been laggard up until a couple of days ago. 
on that AI Gemini talk from Apple. Other than that, the stock has been a dog with fleas. What other names do we like? Let's take a look at my Bollinger Band squeeze setup. And I have a bunch of them. I'm going to blow through these really quick. We'll do some chart requests. Okay, first up, Domino's Pizza. We've been bullish on them for a while. So in black, you have Keltner Channels. In gray, you have your, excuse me, you have Bollinger Bands in black, Keltner Channels in gray, and you have a Bollinger Band squeeze, which is now beginning to fire off. DPZ is moving up higher. Very bullish on it. Uh, Striker, S-Y-K. I don't love the Stokes here. I'm loving the consolidation. This needs to get resolved. So I'm not a buyer on Monday morning unless, of course, they break it out. <coughs> Zebra. This is one of our watch stocks from last week. And I still like it. It did move up higher on the week. We still like it. Bollinger Band squeeze still in effect. Eco. Bollinger Bands trading within the Kelton channels. Another Bollinger Band squeeze. Let's check out the weekly view. Same deal. Weekly view of Eco looking very bullish. Remember, uh, tanker prices, shipping prices are going up. Amazon, we already talked about. Hess, I talked about this one a few weeks ago. And I'm loving this setup. Bollinger Band squeeze on a weekly time frame. And not just a weekly time frame, you have it on a daily time frame as well. Uber. Bollinger Band squeeze setting up. I think this breaks out. Bullish on Uber. Ball Corp. This is an industrial play. Bollinger Band squeeze setting up nicely. I think that Ball Corp breaks out as well. Let's go to the weekly chart. Beautiful bullish key reversal bar last week. We're, break, we're, we're coming out of a very, very nice base here. W formation. Here's the pivot point at $60 per share, and we're moving up higher. Now, names that we're looking to sell premium on. On FedEx, we're going to be looking to sell a call spread due to the fact that RSI is at 85. They popped up on earnings. So we'll be looking to put on a call spread here, which is just a bet that it's going to pull back a little bit. Not a big bearish play at all. Uh, Lululemon. We bought Lululemon on um, Friday morning when it was getting beat up, and we did a, uh, a quick scalp on it. That was a really nice trade. Uh, so Lululemon, we're going to be looking to get back into, but I want to sell a put spread, which is basically a bullish bet on the stock. And if it gets put to us, I'm fine with that. Uh, probably down in this trading range here, we'll probably sell a 380 put option and buy a 370 put option just to hedge that position. And this is just for cash flow, just to pay the rent. Uh, in the video we already spoke about, those are our plays for the new trading week. Now, Franklin wants GM. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. GM. I think I just made 60 people yawn. Uh, GM. I haven't looked at this one in a while. Not bad. 
Not bad. Okay. Uh, isn't Stryker the company behind Arcus Foundation? Scandal brewing there. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, I'm not aware of Arcus Foundation nor of a, of a scandal, but that's why we're here to share information. And uh, if there's any type of uh, smoke out there, we would not trade any stock with any type of impropriety whatsoever. So uh, that would automatically be taken off of our list. So before you trade it, make sure you do your research on Stryker and Arcus Foundation. If there's any semblance of danger, I would pass on it. There's way too many other stocks out there to trade. So GM has broken out. Well, actually, I'm sorry. It has not broken out. Let's do a quick annotated view here. We, we were stuck right at resistance last week. I'd be a buyer on a close above 43.20. That's my price, 43.20 per share. What's the daily chart looking like? Do I have a daily chart? Ah, I always do that. Nope, no daily chart. Oh, bearish reversal bar on Friday. Um, I would avoid very, very short term. Yeah, we got a little bit frothy. The weekly chart looks good. I think you could pull back to 41 bucks a share, maybe 4150, and I would be I would nibble scratchy itch at that uh price point and then buy more on a breakout as mentioned earlier. What else do we need to go over? Oh, DBA. All right, so Joel did the research for us. DBA is being driven up by cocoa prices. Can I get the chart of cocoa prices? Let me see. C-O-C-O-A. Is that how you spell cocoa? Yeah. Here's the continuous contract for cocoa. And it's mind-boggling. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. So on the year so far, Cocoa prices are up 113%. So this is about 8.5% of uh, DBA. This is not going to end well. So back to DBA. So what DBA needs here is, wow, it's yielding nearly 4% now. Oof, this is in Fuego. Monthly chart. There's no volume. I think this is a cocoa trade. I think this is a derivative cocoa trade. Yeah, um, it's a very bullish chart. As goes Coco, so goes DBA.
Me? Uh, Franklin, you're looking for an exit on this? I would probably sell half and put in a good till cancel trailing stop loss order and let the market take you out. If you're looking to exit, that, that would be what I would do. Uh, take half, make it real, and play with the house's money on the rest of it, trailing stop loss. Because when that cocoa price goes, you know, commodities, it's either boom or bust, one of the two. So right now, cocoa is looking very sweet, pun intended. Ha ha. You know, it's it's not sustainable. RSI 93 on a weekly chart. So if this is the reason why DBA is going up, we know it's not wheat sending it up. We know it's not corn. Uh, it's all cocoa. That's what I would do here. Book half profits. Trailing stop, good to cancel on the rest of it and let the market take you out. <clears throat> Doo -doo -doo -doo. Which food companies look good? I like Calmain Foods. They're an egg producer. Very volatile. And they're getting they're, they're breaking out. Yeah, this is breaking out now. So Calmain Foods, that would be my go-to. Okay, what else do we need to go over here? Uh, we only have a couple of minutes left. Let's go see. What requests we have? Patrick. Hey, brother. How you doing? Uh, Trader Isaac. Do you have an opinion on ARM not following the video higher? I think ARM had a little bit of its own bubble going on. It's setting up nicely here, Trader Isaac. I like it. What's the IV rank here? I think it's just consolidating. Yeah, look at that. I think it's getting ready to break out. How can you not have an IV rank? Oh, they don't have enough data. It's a fairly new company. So arm looking very, very good in a wedge formation. Momentum is rising. Very bullish. I like it. And that is it, folks. Thanks for being here. Everybody have an awesome uh, remainder of your Sunday, and I will talk to you soon. Have a profitable trading week. Be well.